Tarzan of the Apes from the novel by Edgar Rice Burroughs. With Mr. James H. Pierce as Tarzan and Miss Joanne Burroughs as Jane Porter. This is an American Gold Seal production coming to you over the World Broadcasting System and Associated Stations. Tarzan has rescued Jane Porter from the pirate ship and with her has returned to the jungle because he believes that her own party cannot protect her. Meanwhile, Professor Porter and his party have been overpowered by Snipes and his crew who put them to work digging for the treasure. In the jungle, the apes are to hold a dum-dum celebration and Tarzan takes Jane to the ceremony. Now, are you ready? Hold your breath. <laughs> The weird pulsating throb of the dum-dum grows louder, more frenzied, more compelling as Jane and Tarzan draw closer to the ceremonial mound of the great apes. Through the almost impassable barrier of twisted branches and matted verdure, the cries of the great apes sound like the ominous rumbling of distant thunder. Oh, I'm almost afraid, Tarzan. Jane, not afraid. Her jack tribe not hurt, Jane. No, I can't exactly describe the feeling. I'm not afraid when I'm with you, but, but just knowing, knowing that I'm going to see Jane, something... Jane, not that... worry. Jane likes dumb dumb. Are we almost there? A little more. Now, go down. Jane closes her eyes as Tarzan, like a falling stone, drops through the semi-gloom of tangled vine and trees. Jane opens her eyes. Then bleeps in amazement. Oh, it can't be real. I must be dreaming. Jane, sit here. What? Jane seats herself at the base of a giant tree. Before her, the apes circle in mad confusion, pausing every few steps to beat upon the great earthen mounds with their short club-like sticks. On the outer circle, chattering and shouting encouragement, the she-apes with their bailus sway back and forth, keeping time with the uncanny rhythm. Jane watches fascinated as Tarzan joins in the reckless abandon of the Prinipi's ceremony. His bronze body gleaming like burnished copper, leaping higher than any. The ape man forgets all about the Tom and Ganny and their strange ways as he gives vent to his pent-up feelings. The weird chanting rises higher and higher. Mighty is the tribe of Kerchak, is the tenor of their cries. Mighty are they in battle, and mightiest of all is Tarzan. Suddenly Tarzan springs to the center of the drum. Still spinning with almost sickening speed, the ape man beats his broad chest with clenched fists, raises his head and gives the challenging cry of the great ape. The throbbing drumming stops. The victory celebration is over. Some of the apes fall where they stand, exhausted. Others amble off into the jungle. Tarzan crosses the clearing to Jane. Jane, like? Oh, I, I don't know. It's so weird and so, so savage. Kerchak apes hold dum-dum because Tarzan kills Sheeta. Yes, I understand that part of it, but, but it's so human in some ways, and yet so unhumanly terrifying in others. I don't know what to think of it, Tarzan. Jane, tired? Yes, I'm tired and worried. I wish I knew what had happened to Daddy. Tomorrow, go to Hut again. Maybe they come back. Oh, I hope you're right, Tarzan. Now, go back, Jane? Yes. And taking Jane in his arms, Tarzan turns to the jungle trail that leads to the platform in the trees. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Darno, Philander, Francois, and Clayton are digging for the treasure under the watchful eye of the pirates. Nearby stands Professor Porter, who, because of fever, has been exempted from digging. Not a very promising prospect, is it? If we don't find the treasure... And if we do find it, what then? Ah, bien, monsieur, I did not believe at first that Snipes was serious about making us dig, but evidently he was. This is the most preposterous nonsense. How can that blooming idiot expect us to dig up treasure when we haven't the faintest notion where it is? Uh, yes, yes, Clayton. I know your feelings exactly. Indeed, I, I feel rather guilty about not taking my share of the digging. Now, Archimedes, you take it easy. The rest of us have strong backs. Oh, oh, oh mine's a little stiff after our strenuous exercise of today. I'm not going to put in another day like this one. I'm going to have it out with Snipes. I cannot blame you, monsieur, but let us wait for a better opportunity. Now you will only get yourself shot. Well... I'd just as soon be shot now as to wait until this farce has played itself any further. Especially as Snipes will probably shoot us under any circumstances. 
I'm almost inclined to side in with you, Clayton. Mm. But, monsieur, you forget one thing. Getting ourselves killed will not help Mademoiselle Jeanne. Now, it's a comfort to know that she is safe in the jungle with Tarzan. Oh, but as soon as we are out of the way, the sailors may attack Tarzan. And then Mademoiselle Jeanne's last protector will be gone. Well, any suggestions? Frankly, uh, I can't suggest anything. It's all right. Attendez, monsieur. He comes the pirate capitaine. Well, how about uh, Just what do you mean, Snaps? You blow seizes all I mean is business, don't you? Look here, Snaps. You're wasting your time threatening us. Well, are you ready to tell me where you hid that blasted treasure? But we know nothing whatever about the treasure. Or if we did, I'd give it to you to get rid of the sight of you. All right, have it your own lie. Well, do you really mean that we're to keep on digging? Of course I do. This fast can't go on, Snaps. You can't seriously expect us to dig up everything in sight. Oh, can't I? And why not? It isn't reasonable. That's why... And even if we dug up a square mile around here, you have no means of knowing that the treasure is within miles of this place. Oh, Charles, that. That treasure chest is too heavy for you blokes to have carried it very far. We didn't carry your infernal chest anywhere. Can't you get that through your thick hands, huh? Or your teeth will be the worst for a belt in your mouth. Écoute-toi. You have overlooked something, you have snipes. Huh? Capitaine snipes. Oh, yeah? And what's that? Have you looked in the original hole where the treasure is located on the map? No, I ain't. What for? We move the treasure from there and dump her into an iron hole. Ah, but is it not foreseeable that some of your men might have been too smart for you and that they might have removed the treasure back to the original hole? Huh? No, they never had no chance. Ah, that is what you think. But if you do look, voila, the treasure may be there. Look here, mister. If you're trying on some game... King, Wilson, come here and guard the prisoner. All right, mister, I'll look. What kind of a gag are you trying to pull on Snipes, Dono? You know perfectly well that the treasure isn't in the original place. Quickly, monsieur. While Snipes is looking for the treasure, do you think we can make a break for it? Not a chance, Dono. Those two fellows, King and Wilson, that he said to guard us are pretty villainous looking. No, Dono, it won't work. King has a grudge against us anyway. And they've both got rifles. And could pot us at their leisure. But I think I can work something on the guards. A little trickery. Well, go ahead. But I'm not at all sanguine. Uh, King. Well? Uh, may I have a word with you privately? Whatever you've got to say, my pal can hear it, Cali. Uh, very well. Though I thought you might like to know it all for yourself. Well, speak up if you've got anything to say. What if I were to tell you where the treasure really is? What's that? I say, what if I were to tell you where the treasure is hidden? Would you help us to escape before Snipes has a chance to carry out his threat and kill us all when the treasure is found? Well, I... I don't know. You arranged to come and talk to us tonight after everyone is asleep. I'd be taking an awful chance. But is not the treasure worth some chance? Uh, what about Wilson? Is he in? Uh, of course. The treasure is big enough for two at midnight then. Entendu? Hush. Hush. Here's Snipes. Yes. Midnight. What did you find, Snipes? Dancing beams of silver through the lacy screen of leaves that forms the jungle tree. Overhead, the chattering of monkeys and the screeching of parrots have given way to the droning hum of insects and the drowsy sighing of the light breezes playing in the treetops. Below, the jungle depths resound to the distant roar of Numa, the lion, the spitting cough of Sheeta, the leopard, or the shrill trumpeting of Tantor, the elephant. Lying before the little leafy alcove, Jane and Tarzan gaze along the jungle trail. Oh, I can't sleep tonight, Tarzan. I don't know what it is. A sort of... I know this sounds silly, but I have a feeling as if something were going to happen. Tarzan not sleepy. Maybe Jane not like dum-dum. No, I wouldn't say that, Tarzan. But, well, in a way, I'm sorry I went. I don't understand. No, I could scarcely expect that you would. For this is your life. It's all that you've ever known. But it was a bit disconcerting to me be suddenly swept back thousands of years to the very dawn of humanity, to see primeval life in all its raw savagery, and to see you, you, a part of it. Yes, it was disconcerting and perhaps a little disillusioning. Tarzan does not understand what Jane says. I'm glad that you don't. Even if you had complete mastery of the English language, I still might not be able to make you understand. For how could you see through the eyes of a civilized girl especially when she's not sure that she sees clearly when she says disillusioning and perhaps means revealing. Oh, Tarzan, Tarzan, 
You can never know how I felt seeing you dancing there with those great hairy apes. They are my people. Our ways are not the ways of the Tarman Ganny. Sometimes it made me shudder to see you. That was disillusionment. And sometimes I thrilled. And that was revelation. I don't know which was stronger. Jane, sad? In a way, yes. Tarzan, sorry. It's not your fault. And nothing for you to be sorry about. You see, Tarzan, there are some things that, well, no matter how much you would like to know about them, nevertheless, you're better off if you don't. The dum-dum is one of those things. I think Jane just talked. Just talk to herself. No, you're teasing again. But I suppose it isn't quite fair of me to keep on talking about something you don't understand. Something, in fact, that I don't understand myself. Tarzan does not quite know what to make of this new attitude, and not knowing how to answer, the ape man is silent. Jane gazes with unseeing eyes into the depths of the jungle. Before her flashes again and again the mad, swirling picture of the dum dum, and always before she can thrust the image into the background, she sees Tarzan's leaping, gyrating figure. That she now loves Tarzan, she scarcely denies, even to herself. And try as she can, she cannot picture him in any setting other than the jungle. Her jumbled thoughts are interrupted by a distant rumbling. What is it, Tarzan? Even the lions, everything seems to be afraid. Tarzan does not know. The ape man steps to the edge of the platform. The roar settles into a steady, crashing, earth shaking rumble. under the terrific onslaught. Tarzan sweeps Jane to him as the herd of stampeding elephants crashes down the narrow jungle trail toward them. With a mad elephants sweep Jane and Tarzan away with them? On what of Darno and the others? 